Ryan, what's on your radar? Well, so last week, I took a close look at the massive difference between what was actually in the most recent filing from Special Counsel John Durham and what Fox News was reporting was in the latest filing from Special Counsel John Durham. Now, to refresh your memory, here's what Fox News host Jesse Waters claimed was in that document. Durham's documents show that Hillary Clinton hired people who hacked into Trump's home and office computers before and during his presidency and planted evidence that he colluded with Russia. Yeah, you heard that right. Hillary broke into a presidential candidate's computer server and a sitting president's computer server spying on him. There, her hackers planted evidence, fabricated evidence connecting Trump to Russia, then fed that doctored material to the feds and the media. Now, unfortunately for Waters, that filing was and is public, so you can read it for yourself. But because I know that people today really don't trust the media, and because I know that our more conservative viewers particularly don't trust a lefty like me, I decided to read the entire relevant portion of the motion word for word last week so people could judge for themselves what was in it. You can go back and watch that segment. But suffice it to say, those claims made by Jesse Waters and spread all over the place by Fox are not at all backed up by what's in the document. Now, what's, in, what's interesting is that even after I read the filing, lots of our viewers insisted that actually the story told by Fox was still definitely true. And really, all I was doing was running cover for crooked Hillary. Okay, so it's one thing not to believe me when I'm reading John Durham's words directly to you. But would you believe John Durham himself? So in response to Durham's filing, Michael Sussman, the lawyer who he's charged with lying to the FBI, filed a counter motion arguing that Durham's filing was unethical because it clearly was intended simply to get the media all riled up. The purpose of Durham's filing was to point out that one of Sussman's lawyers had a conflict of interest because that lawyer had previously worked with the Obama administration, which is caught up in the scandal Durham is investigating. But Sussman is aware of that and previously waived the conflict of interest provision. There was no point in Durham including those three ambiguous and salacious paragraphs for a run-of-the-mill conflict of interest filing other than to gin up a bunch of media coverage, Sussman argued, pointing to headlines from Fox News and other conservative outlets that spun what Durham filed into something else entirely. In Durham's filing in response, he threw Fox News and the rest of them right under the bus. Durham writes, quote, if third parties or members of the media have overstated, understated, or otherwise misinterpreted facts contained in the government's motion, that does not in any way undermine the valid reasons for the government's inclusion of this information, unquote. Okay, so that's not Durham saying directly that conservative media overstated what he put in the filing, but in a legal filing, that's really as close as you're going to get. According to Durham, it's not his fault if Fox News or Jesse Waters took what he wrote and spun it up into something that it wasn't. And you know what? Maybe it wasn't his fault. We can blame Fox for it, but what's the point? Fox is going to do what Fox is going to do as long as they keep getting rewarded by viewers for lying to them. And if last week is any indication, a huge number of their viewers are totally fine with being lied to. In fact, they fight for the right to be lied to. I read directly from Dorham's filing to show that Fox had lied, and still a significant chunk of our right-wing viewers preferred to believe Fox over their own lying eyes and ears. Now, even Dorham himself is saying that it's not his fault if the media blew it when they reported on his filing. But if I've gotten to know our audience, I bet that a good portion of them will continue to believe Fox News over John Dorham, even on the subject of what John Dorham put in his filing. Now, for the rest of you, this all must feel a little bit like this. Weekend Update recognizes its obligation to present responsible opposing viewpoints to our editorials. Here with an editorial reply is Miss Emily Latella. What's all this fuss I keep hearing about violins on television? Now, why don't parents want their children to see violins on television? Why, I thought the Leonard Bernstein concerts were just lovely. Now, if they only show violins after 10 o'clock at night, the little babies will all be asleep and they won't learn any music appreciation. Why, they'll end up wanting to play guitar and bongo drums and go to Africa and join these rock and roll outfits and they won't drink milk. <laughs> I say there should be more violins on television and less game shows. It's Oh, the way thing. What? Mr. What? 
Vitality. That was violence on television, not violins. Violence. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. Yes. Never mind. Never mind. I've never seen that clip. <laughs> it's good. It's great. I'm not the biggest Saturday Night Live fan. Uh, that's 70s Saturday Night Live, though. It used to be better. We can, better. We can get with better. that. So, I mean, one thing I like about this show is that it, it's a way to kind of break through the bubble mm -hmm. because to, to our... Our show, not Saturday yes. Night Live. Right. Our yeah, show. and to, 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 the, to the credit of our the right-wing audience, like, they're watching a show that is just not just right-wing, so they have to sometimes suffer through some of this liberal commentary. Right. You should, our show is frequently right. not right-wing. It, 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 it could be more right-wing. Right <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's all this, all this pro-union stuff. Yeah. And so often I'm directing my comments at a more progressive mm -hmm. audience, but sometimes I want to take the opportunity to uh, shake people and be like, look, your criticism of corporate media can't cleave off Fox News. Mm -hmm. Like, what is special about Fox? that is going to make it so that they're only 100% of the time going to tell you the truth and everyone else is going to 100% lie to you. If you're actually an independent thinker, that means coming to each issue and thinking through it independently, not automatically making up your mind that you believe right. the opposite of whatever your enemies think. Sometimes the people that you hate are actually right. I, mean, I can the, acknowledge that. The truth is that Fox and everyone else in the conservative media, media ecosystem, they get some things wrong and some things right. And actually, that's true of the mainstream media. Yeah. The, you know, we, we bash CNN a lot because it can be funny, and a lot of their more sort of commentary type stuff is, uh, I think, really laughable. <laughs> but they do good reporting all the time, as does the New York Times, my arch nemesis, the New York Times, yeah. Washington Post, et cetera. They also run, you know, with, with traditional newspapers, it's, uh, and also with cable news, the blurring of the opinion news line has made this harder because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will go, oh my God, look what they're printing now. Go, well, that's a, like an opinion piece. They run you know, opinion pieces in all these sort of outlets. Some of them are more ridiculous than others. And, and they're one-sided, like the New York Times runs far more crazy left-wing opinion right. stuff than it does. You know, they run one tiny op-ed by Tom Cotton and they almost bring the Everybody whole place down. Yes. Everybody has to quit dramatically. So th there's a lot of fair criticism there, but... Um, and I understand why they, people would be skeptical of the yeah. mainstream media's approach on this particular issue. And would, the main, right, would the mainstream reporting thought, on this was terrible. Absolutely botched it. And, there is, and the liberals, here, and here's the problem, is that when Fox, let, let's be generous and call it a mistake. When Fox makes mistakes like this, it allows liberals then to say, see, we were right to ignore this issue the whole time. Because look, this thing was a lie. Right. This thing is falling apart. And then that allows them to not explore the facts that, that are actually there, which are the Clinton campaign did gin up the Steele dossier. Right. The Steele dossier was filled and there with are a nonsense lot of, and fabrication. And, there, yeah. and this is why, that, like, this seems like a, bi like a very big deal. There are still liberal reporters at mainstream news sources who have not admitted they were, who still right. cling to the idea that, yeah, Russia did this. It was the, it, it's just a, like the, the national security yeah. type progressive liberal reporters are still in that mindset. There, there was no, oh yeah, we got this wrong. We're right. sorry. They haven't right. admitted that. I don't think they believe they got it wrong. I think they've convinced themselves it was right. Right. I think what some, what some of them have probably done is said, okay, maybe there wasn't any collusion that has been proven. Right. Would Malcolm Nance but even admit that? He probably wouldn't. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> He'd be like, I have sources. <laughs> right. I have sources. I can't tell you what my sources right. are, but my sources will say. Right. No, and so that, I mean, and that's one reason probably that I feel more comfortable opining on this because I never kind of bought into the Russian collusion stuff to begin with. And a lot of the, and, and, and I think it's interesting, it's important, I think, for kind of conservative audiences to be exposed to the, the fissures within the left because there was a huge chunk of the left that felt like liberals were leaning on the Russia collusion thing in order to escape responsibility for beating Bernie Sanders in an underhanded way in the primary mm -hmm. in order to then prop up and run a failed candidate in Hillary who then lost to an absolute clown show in Donald Trump. The only person probably in the country that could have lost to Donald Trump was the one that the Democratic Party establishment foisted on the party. And so people in kind of my camp of the world felt like the Russia thing was being used to distract 
so that they didn't have to take responsibility for their so for their own failures. That's pretty much how it all how it all shook out. Right. Yes. But on the on the right, people think that even the like Bernie folks bought into the Russia Gate. Right. Stuff, There's a lot of it. lazily characterizing like everyone from liberal to left yeah. the same. And and I know because I've seen. I see, Hang out with you. I, I, I see the left up close. I know there are deep divisions, are. as deep as anything on on the right. Uh, yeah. Deep questions of policy priorities and candidate preference, and so on. Right. So just I would ask, read these filings closely. Yeah. Don't get carried away. Right. There's there's plenty of uh, criminal activity in there to uncover without right. getting fake stuff up right. about Hillary planting evidence and. Trump's we still server. might find that out one day, but this we, this filing does we, not. We certainly show might. Does not, and the other uh, funny thing, it, the right kept saying that this happened while Trump was campaigning and also while he was president. No, no the president they were referring to was Obama. That was either just a misreading, I think, because the whole conflict of interest argument was that the lawyer worked for the Obama administration, right. Obama administration, not Trump administration. We might find out things, and, and there's plenty of. A scandalous activity that went on. Some people believe Trump is still the president, and yes. maybe and always was the president. Oh, that's a good point. Yes, yes. Trump, <laughs> Trump forever, Trump forever. Well, our rising panel is next. Stay with us for that.